On this episode of the DC Eric Show, we go back to 1996 and show you Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the SNES. Well, back in October of 1996, there was two really awesome games that came out. And while, yes, it seems weird that these two games carry the same name, they are two different games with different titles. Mortal Kombat Trilogy, which was released for the PS1, around the same date as Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the SNES. I really wanted to have Mortal Kombat Trilogy, but I didn't get the PS1 until 1998, so there was no reason to get that game not knowing if I would ever get a PS1. While Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 was released for the SNES, which was a bit identical to Mortal Kombat Trilogy, but had less levels, less characters, low quality audio, and low quality graphics. I was waiting the whole year to get money for this game, and it wasn't until my birthday, I believe, of 1997, I would finally get my hands on this game. Cool part was I got this game from Blockbuster, which is no longer in Canada. Well, I got my copy of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, not realizing it was similar to Mortal Kombat Trilogy. I also didn't realize until much later on that this game was not a port of the arcade version, but was an updated SNES version of Mortal Kombat 3. The arcade version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 contained less characters than the SNES version of the game, containing 21 characters, of which are all available on the SNES version. The SNES version contains 23 characters, and the two extra characters missing from the arcade version are Noob, Sabot, and Rain. All secret characters in the arcade version already come unlocked on the SNES version, with the exception of the bosses, which have to be unlocked via cheat code. I've always been into the Mortal Kombat series of games, starting from the first Mortal Kombat game which I owned on the SNES. The Sega Genesis had a version of the game which had a cheat code that unlocked blood. The SNES version of Mortal Kombat didn't have any blood and modified fatalities. When Mortal Kombat 2 was released for the SNES, Sculpture Software put blood in the game without the use of a cheat code. But the game also had to have a label on the box that said it contained blood and was meant for an older audience. Of course, Sega Genesis would also get Mortal Kombat 2, and the game also had blood without the use of a cheat code, but contained a warning label like the SNES version. The reason why Sculpture Software put blood in Mortal Kombat 2 for the SNES was that Mortal Kombat 1 didn't sell well. Also, this would be the very first game that contained as much violence than any other Nintendo video game ever had. I really enjoyed the ports of Mortal Kombat series for the SNES. I think the graphics were more polished, and it contained better sounding audio than the ports to the Sega Genesis. Of course, the console versions wouldn't sound as good as the arcade versions they were based off of. Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the SNES contained some minor bugs, one of them being contained in the 8-player endurance match. When you select for random characters, sometimes the letter E will show up, and that would be in place for Shiva. Shiva's pellets were removed and instead would appear all glitchy on the screen. The sound effects was still there and Shiva was stronger and faster, but you would end up crashing the game. The pit for Mortal Kombat 3 was also featured in this game, but would only be used at the end boss battles. Unless, of course, you unlock the cheat code, allowing you to change the levels. Also, the announcer no longer names the characters when you select them from the character select screen and when a character wins a match. Shao Kahn's treasure chest only contains 10 boxes you can choose from, instead of 12. And melodies were removed from this version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and were replaced with brutalities, which were fatalities that combined a crazy combo finisher that would end up making a character explode. Some of the characters' finishing moves were different or had minor adjustments from the arcade version. Now, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the SNES might have had its downfalls, but for anybody that couldn't get their hands on Mortal Kombat Trilogy, then the SNES version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 wasn't a bad game to have. Of course, this version might not be as higher quality than the arcade version, but the game contains two more characters which add a bit more fun to the game. There was two other console versions of this game released, for the Sega Saturn and Sega Genesis. The Sega Saturn version had problems with load times for finishing moves, and the template for Noob Sabot was changed. The Sega Genesis version is almost identical to the SNES version with the exception of the graphics and sound, which were low quality so it could fit all the content on the cartridge. Well, I guess I've come to the end of the show, and I would like to say I really enjoy the SNES version of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Of course, I finally got my hands on Mortal Kombat Trilogy for the PC, so you'd see me playing that more than I would be playing Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 for the SNES. 
You can find the Mortal Kombat series of games on eBay or your local game shop. Let's not forget, there is a new Mortal Kombat game available for PS3 and the Xbox 360. This game is superior to the previous games, and you should get your hands on it. It's called Mortal Kombat, and it takes the name from the first game. Thanks for watching, and I hope you come back to see another game I couldn't keep my hands off.